Do you want to see a guy light his tap water on fire? You've probably already seen this clip. Now, uh, this is from the look, look, wait, one, two. Yeah, here it go. Uh, this is, uh, this is from the documentary. Yeah, come on. This is from the documentary Gasland that came out last year. The man you see here is lighting his tap water, his ordinary drinking water. Yeah, there we go. Lighting his ordinary drinking water, the same tap water you have in your house, uh, except his lights on fire. He's able to pull off that bit of alchemical magic because his water supply has been poisoned, contaminated with chemicals that are more flammable than water is inflammable. And it's not just that one faucet. It's not just that one family. It turns out that the lighting the water from my faucet on fire thing is a whole genre on YouTube. Just turn on the tap and break out the lighter. Turns out a lot of Americans can now burn their water, which does make you worry that if something in your house catches fire, what exactly should you use to put that fire out? Fracking, uh, known in textbooks as hydraulic fracturing, is one way energy companies get oil and gas out of the ground if it's stuck inside rock. They pump water and chemicals into the rock to fracture it, thus releasing the trapped fuel that they want to get out of there and sell. Uh, but also, in the process, they pump all that hydraulic fracturing fluid into the ground. Ground. Into the ground. Ground is the root word of groundwater. What's in the hydraulic fracturing fluid that these companies are pumping into the ground and thereby maybe into the groundwater? We don't know. Uh, legally, the companies do not have to disclose what it is that they are pumping into the ground. In 2005, President Bush signed a law saying that even though we have a safe, water drinking, safe drinking water act in this country that's supposed to stop anybody from polluting Americans' drinking water, quote, hydraulic fracturing operations related to oil, gas, or geothermal activities are exempt from those federal regulations. So the federal government will stop you from polluting drinking water in this country unless you're an oil and gas company polluting the drinking water by fracking, in which case, cool beans, sorry to bug you, carry on. Ever since then, energy companies have been having a fracking awesome time of it all over the US, anywhere they think they might, there might be uh, fuel they can blast out of the ground that way. With the federal government unable to regulate fracking, the job has fallen to the states, and the states have not been very good at it. Remember how not just our tap water, but also our rivers used to catch fire in this country? That's part of why we have federal regulation of the water supply at all, because the states could not handle it, and so the rivers would catch fire. They either couldn't handle it or they wouldn't handle it. Now we're living through that water catching fire era all over again. This year in Pennsylvania, for example, the new Republican governor there, Tom Corbett, handed over all decisions about fracking to a single political appointee, an appointee who also happens to be a top energy executive and a major contributor to Governor Corbett's political campaigns. In the gas patch of Wyoming, where there's quite a bit of fracking, Wyoming residents have been complaining about changes in their drinking water for years. Pour a glass of water and you'd see a rainbow sheen, they said, like an oil slick at a gas station. And it smelled like gasoline. Last year, the government warned people in tiny Pavilion, Wyoming, to stop drinking their water altogether because it could make them sick. Well water and groundwater both had become so filled with compounds like methane that the government advised people to open the windows and turn on a fan when they took a shower or did laundry. Otherwise, their houses might explode. The EPA told the town that it couldn't be sure yet what was causing the pollution. Then last week, after years of testing, the EPA released new results from its tests in Wyoming. They found traces of diesel fuel in the water, and acetone, and naphthalene, benzene at 50 times the level considered safe for humans. They found something called 2-BE, 2-butoxyethanol, which ProPublica reports is a chemical that's widely used in fracking. Joining us now is Abram Lustgarten, the ProPublica reporter who broke the story of what's up with Wyoming's water right now. Uh, Mr. Lustgarten, thanks very much for being here. It's nice to have you back on the show. Hi, Rachel. The EPA is not saying this water pollution is definitely coming from the fracking in Wyoming, but is there a reasonable alternate explanation as far as you can tell? Uh, yeah, there are a couple alternative explanations. Uh, they all have to do with drilling, though, if not the fracking process specifically. Uh, there are a bunch of old uh, waste pits from drilling waste that are in the area that uh, are known to have contaminated the ground to some extent. The question is, have they gone all the way down into people's drinking water wells? And in the case of what they announced this week, have they gone a thousand feet down into into these monitoring wells? Uh, it's also possible that there are other uh, spilled substances from uh, the drilling activities on the surface from from 
trucks and so forth uh, that have gotten into the wells. Uh, but they have, uh, they seem to have ruled out agricultural causes, which would be the other uh, industrial activity in the area. No nitrates, no fertilizers, nothing like that. If in the big picture the federal government is not supposed to be regulating uh, fracking activity in terms of its effect on drinking water, why is it the EPA that's doing the testing here? Well, the EPA responded to a, a growing clamor of complaints from Pavilion uh, that go almost a decade back. And uh, the EPA still has responsibility for uh, regulating water, regulating the environment under both the Clean Water Act and the Safe Drinking Water Act. And they took this on as a as really a straightforward scientific investigation. It's not, uh, as they tell it, a, a, an investigation into drilling or hydraulic fracturing. It was just to find out if the water was indeed contaminated. They've confirmed that it is. And, and eventually to, to try to get a line on, on what caused that contamination. Uh, the program's funded uh, through the Superfund cleanup program, entirely separate from the agency's investigation into hydraulic fracturing. Abram, I know that you have been um, you have been on this story for a long time. When you first set out to cover this story about potentially contaminated water in that part of the country, how how quickly did people start talking about the possibility that uh, drilling or indeed fracking specifically could be to blame? How certain were they about that, and how early on? Well, it really depended on who you talked to. Uh, Pavilion's one of the places that, that we first went, that I first began reporting in 2008. And, and like a lot of other places, uh, there were a range of folks, uh, some who complained about their water and had no idea what might have caused it, and, and others who suspected that drilling had. And, uh, and beginning in about 2004, until the time I started reporting in 2008, there was a growing suspicion that this process of hydraulic fracturing might be causing some problems. Uh, it, not a lot known about it, but uh, but it's a, it's a scary uh, scary kind of process, and, and when you do try to learn more, you learn uh, some of the things you mentioned about exemptions and, uh, and loopholes and, and a real lack of understanding. So, uh, so that kind of increased suspicions that fracking might be, uh, you know, one of the processes or the process that was causing contamination. Uh, but really, until now, and, and even to, to a great extent now, uh, you know, that's that's inconclusive. Uh, it's just the chief suspect. Do you see any prospect that the states actually could get great at regulating this type of activity? And and taking care of uh, people's health and safety? Well, sure, they could. Uh, and there are some states that do a you know, comparatively good job, and there are some states that, that fall way behind. Uh, what's missing is, is really a consistent baseline, uh, and that's something that, that uh, you know, a lot of people who want to see regulation say that the EPA can provide. Uh, what uh, no state does really well, and, I, and in my, you know, my opinion after having covered this for a long time, every state needs to do is, is uh, push to, to uh, have, make sure that the best practices that are known are, are used in the gas fields. And, and in, in oil drilling as well, and that's to say that uh, you know the best and safest and most environmentally protective techniques that the industry knows how to use are actually employed and used and uh, not disregarded just to uh, to save a little bit of money or save some time. Abram Lustgarden, the ProPublica reporter who broke the story of these Wyoming wells. Uh, thanks for your reporting on this. It's been dogged over a lot of years, and thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.